Well, I believe we have a couple of webcast questions that I will allow Jeannie to share. Yes, uh, speaking of, of Mr. Strauss, he, he actually has submitted uh, a recommendation for, for us to comment on about how to move forward. Uh, he says, one way in which you might be able to deal with your transition would be to try to convert your current specific requirements into performance requirements that can endure over time and may be met by SDO standards you think adequate as they mature. It would be best if you could find a way to broadcast those determinations in a way that would not fit the statutory definition of guidance, but would still permit everyone to know a secure way of meeting your requirements and one that could easily change over time. This is why it is so unfortunate that guidance and regulatory requirements are equated in the statute. Over half the standards currently incorporated by reference were incorporated before 1995, and given the diligent way SDOs revisit their standards, uh, these must all be outdated. Does anyone have a comment on that? You mean you're going to tell the public that most of the standards now incorporated by reference are outdated? I'd be very careful about that assumption. They may need to be clarified and enhanced, but I can't believe, and I've looked at a lot of more standards than I really care. There are changes, but most of the changes I see are not going to be orders of magnitude shift in patterns. So uh, while they may have gone obsolete because they were chosen not to be updated, uh, those that are incorporated by reference probably are not in, un, they can be applied, I guess is what I'm saying. So just be careful of assumptions. I don't know who's right or wrong here. My experience would tell me that there's no problem with the regulations incorporated by reference given their limitations. Jairus, we have a question in the back. I was actually going to make a ask kind of a follow up question on it. I, you know, we're kind of desperately searching. Can for you state your name and okay, who you're with? Excuse me, uh, Don Sturzma, uh, Iowa Utility Board slash uh, National Association of Pipeline Safety Representatives. Uh, while we're all kind of desperately looking for an angle here, I just thought I'd throw something out just to just as maybe a conversation starter, and that is, what if the rule said something like, and I'll just use a specific example: uh, all operators shall adopt specification for the selection of their line pipe. Uh, their standards, this requirement could be met by adopting in national standards such as API 5L, where you're not mandating use of the standard, but indicating that you could comply with the regulation if you did adopt that standard. Again, I don't know if it's a practical solution, but I'm looking for an angle. I think that's part of the issue that Peter, I think, is getting at, Peter Strauss. I think he's pointing out that the statute uses guidance and um, a regulation cannot incorporate by reference. So if we issued a guidance saying you can comply with this rule by such and such a SDO standard, it's still subject to the statute and the document has to be available for free on the Internet. I don't know if that's what was intended. I don't know if they understood the difference between the two words. What I do know is Peter is making a good point that both of those may be subject to the statute. The other problem, and we've heard some people talk about it, is it takes us more time to write the rule, even if it's a general, simple standard. It also will take us more time to approve the alternative means of compliance if you don't use the SDO standard. We can't require you to or suggest that you do it. And if that's the only one we'll accept quickly, the courts might hold it anything that that that. that, that then becomes a regulation with a legally binding effect. So we've got all kinds of complications, not the least of which is it takes time to approve alternative means of compliance. We're not getting more staff and more money, we're getting less. So does that take, does that put us in a better position? I, I'm, I'm not sure we can directly answer that yet. Uh, it occurs to me, this is Emily Bremer from the Administrative Conference, that uh, the Inclusion of guidance in this statute may not be very effective uh, because incorporation by reference in the regulatory context is, is a term of art. It refers to material that is incorporated by reference in something that is published in the Federal Register and codified in the Code of Federal Regulations. 
So the question I would have for you is, what is the difference between a citation or a reference and an incorporation by reference? Um, and I, I, I think that there's an argument to be made, maybe not one that you want to go to court with, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there is an argument to be made that incorporation by reference refers to something quite specific and, and that, that, that would not apply if you are citing a standard in the context of a guidance document where something is not being incorporated by reference with the approval of the Office of the Federal Register in a codified regulation. I, I, I agree. We, we've already thought about that interpretation <laughs> that it's not what the Federal Register is referring to. But number one, if it bothers Peter Strauss, it, it it could be a real serious problem. And number two, I don't think we want to go through <laughs> two or three or four years of rulemaking incorporating things in guidance documents, have the court say that word must have meant something in that statute. And I don't disagree. It just didn't occur to me until now, so I thought maybe it hadn't occurred to Peter Strauss yet either. <laughs> well, well, I'm sure we're going to hear from Peter within a few minutes. I'm sure too. <laughs> I'll let you know. 